Welcome to our online video series, Reading Hope in Trying Times. Our guest today is Leslie Leland Fields. Leslie is the author of editor of 12 books, and her latest book, Your Story Matters, Finding Writing and Living the Truth of Your Life, has just been released, so our timing is really good today. A previous book, Crossing the Waters, won Christianity Today's 2017 Book of the Year for Christian Living, and her other books include Forgiving Our Fathers and Mothers, Finding Freedom from Hate and Hurt, also The Spirit of Food, 34 Writers on Feasting and Fasting Toward God, and then Hooked, True Stories of Obsession, Death, and Love from Alaska's Commercial Fishing Men and Women, and then also Parenting is Your Highest Calling, and Eight Other Myths. <laughs> Great titles. <laughs> Leslie's won a number of awards for her articles, which have appeared in The Atlantic, Orion, BeliefNet, Image, Best Essays Northwest, Christianity Today, On Nature, A Mile in Her Boots, America in the Sea, and many others. Leslie's taught creative fiction in places like Seattle Pacific University's Master of Fine Arts program, and she was the founder, or is the founder, and leader of the Harvester Island Wilderness Workshop, set on her island in Alaska that attracts writers nationally and internationally. So we're really glad to have Leslie with us here today. Hi, great to be with you again, Brian. Well, it's my pleasure, Leslie. Um, maybe we can start off by sharing some of your thoughts on the current health crisis and what people can do to cope with that. Yeah, and you know, there's there's a lot of great advice out there. So I'm just I'm going to jump in with some of my thoughts, um, and I just want to say too that the whole um, we're my family we're on quarantine because we were traveling and then we came back to our island in Alaska. So we're we're locked literally locked in the house here for. Um, for the next 14 days, but the whole isolation thing, um, uh, my husband and I are really familiar with that. We've spent a couple of winters out on our island, another island um, in Alaska in the bush, where for two winters we had no contact with the outside world. So it was just the two of us literally on an island and nobody around for miles and miles. So we've weathered some, some isolation. Um, so I just want to share a few things that might be helpful um, to people. Um, first thing I want to say is don't overdose on the news. And I know all of us are, are so tempted. I mean, I, there are days when I'm at an absolute news junkie, right? You just, and I think when this whole thing started, the whole, whole COVID-19 thing started, we were all just glued to our screens, whether it's, you know, TV or internet. Um, and now that this is going on day after day, I think we're recognizing that it's really easy to overdose on that. Um, we don't, at my house, we don't have TV, but I was just traveling and in hotels and I was watching the news, you know, kind of obsessively. And I, there's this one morning I watched as I was getting ready to, to, uh, to go, I ended up watching probably an hour all these different experts and all the, and the rest of that day, I was so stressed out. And I recognize that there's something that happens when you're constantly watching people um, on a screen and talking with this great, you know, urgency and severity. And, and some people are, are absolutely sort of sensationalizing it all, that you absorb that and you end up carrying that with you for the rest of the day, into the night, you know, you don't sleep. So I, I, I'm not saying to be ignorant, stay informed but really be careful of how much you allow yourself to take in. Um, don't overdose and, um, you know, go to several sources. And I, I personally think the best way to get news is, is, is to read it. Um, so you don't have somebody there looking you, you know, in the face and doing, you know, whatever, whatever thing they're doing <laughs> that, that makes your, your, um, your blood pressure go up. So, I think it's, it's better, it keeps it just a little bit more at a distance to read. Um, so there's another part to that, sort of, you know, limit your intake of that kind of news. And I would say up your intake of the other kind of news, which is the truest news that we've got, which is the gospel, you know, God's word. Um, you know, every day things are happening. So we've kind of got this whiplash and, you know, it's been exhausting to keep up. But turn off turn off that news and settle into, into God's good news. And, and we need to be every day reminded the king is on the throne, right? And the good shepherd is still out there going after his lost sheep. And 
we can be a part of that, especially now. This is such a great time. Um, there are lots of good things happening around us, and we can be part of those good things um, that are happening, you know, in the midst of this crisis. I see people making huge efforts to reach out, to be kind to one another, to help one another, to shop for one another, which is what people are doing for us, right? We can't go into the store, so people are shopping for us. So look for ways um, to serve other people. And God has always used disruption to grow his kingdom. So I think that's the larger news, the bigger, better news that's going on in the midst of this, is that God is desiring to grow his kingdom um, in the midst of what's happening. So it's exciting that we get to be a part of that. Well, you know, there's so many good examples, you know, of, of people doing really wonderful things, too, in the midst yeah. of all of this. So that's wonderful to see. But I, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what the longer term changes are. You know, yeah. um, and, and, and you're certainly using communication tools like we are right now uh, is going to be more prevalent than what it had been. Yeah, I think there are going to be huge implications and repercussions from from this. And we are discovering that, I mean, all most of us are, are like worshiping with our church online. And, and I would never say that that's, you know, God's ideal for us. But it suddenly sort of vaulted all of us you know, into this new way of reaching out, you know, even my little church of 100 people, you know, we're doing this as well and, and doing it and doing it meaningfully. So, yeah, it will be so interesting to see what what comes out of this. Um, I, I want to say a couple, a couple of other things, too. I'm still on the helping, helping people. Um, and you're probably already doing this. I hope you are. But create a schedule and and set goals for yourself. And if you're a writer, um, especially, um, set some writing goals and some reading goals. And, and you have to, you know, it's this balancing act, right, of setting goals to keep us all motivated and moving and productive, but also recognizing that people around us may be in crisis and even within our own household. So hold those, hold those goals firmly, but also lightly. Um, let go of them when, you know, God calls us first to love him and to love our neighbor. Um, so we set up our schedule and no, knowing that at any moment we may have to release it to, you know, a, a higher call that God has on our lives. Um, and I want to give everyone a, a little assignment out there. If, if you're not doing this, I really want to encourage you to do this. Um, we, God, God talks about remembering in the scriptures a lot and especially in the Old Testament. Um, the importance of remembering and um it, we're, we're all living this in this extraordinary time and we need to be taking notes every day just jotting down moments things that people say what what your son said to you you know when when he opened the closet to your stash of toilet paper right the fun things and and the hard things um so in the Old Testament, there's this um, incredible moment when the Hebrew people who have just gone through 40 years of wandering and they're about to enter the promised land, right? They've been waiting 40 years for this. And before they step a foot in, before they enter, God says, wait, hold it. And he has these words to them, which I think are also words to us. He says, however, <laughs> be careful. And watch yourselves closely so you don't forget the things which you have seen with your own eyes. Don't let them fade from your memory as long as you live. Teach them to your children and grandchildren. And so those are words to us, too. Whether you're a writer or you're not a writer, it, it doesn't matter. God is instructing us to remember. We're living in these extraordinary days. Remember. Remember. Write down your prayers. Write down the way God is showing up in your family, out in your community. Teach these. Be ready to teach these to your children and grandchildren. Um, so if you haven't set writing goals for yourself, I want to give that to you as, um, a little bit, uh, as a little bit of a writing goal. No, you probably can't write a book right now. I don't know if anybody has the time or the focus to be able to do that, but you can jot down notes every day. Um, as God is working and, and moving around you. 
Well, I think that's great advice for all the writers that we have out there in our uh, writing for your life and publishing in color community. So, so thank you for that, Leslie. Um, yeah. And yeah. And that's, I would say that's one of the reasons that I do writing workshops. And that's one of the reasons that I, I wrote um, my new book, your story matters, finding writing and living the truth of your life um, is I talk about, you know, God's admonition to us to remember, and we're creating uh, our own new testament testimony to god's work in our lives and that's vital for everybody to do and it, it doesn't matter if you think of yourself as a writer or not this is something god wants us to do for um you know for for the growth of his kingdom and for um just his uh, you know for for um god's work to be passed on down through our families so i've had the pleasure of reading some of your previous books um and in particular some of the stories that you tell about hair raising experiences in Alaska, <laughs> as an example, um, you know, I know because of that, you've been through plenty of challenging times in your life. So could you share with folks a little bit about how God's helped lead you through that? Yeah. So I, I'll tell you one of those stories um, that has kind of really changed my life. And, um, so this is um, a few years ago, I, I guess quite a few years ago, um, my husband and I were on a boat. Um, we were, it was about a six hour journey from our island back to Kodiak Island. And we left and, and within about 30 minutes, a big storm came up. I mean, the sky grew dark, the seas grew huge. And, um, and our engines um, suddenly just, died we had two outboards and they and they just died so we were we were virtually dead in the water which meant that our boat now you know when you're out in big seas you want to keep the bow of the boat into the waves right so now we we didn't have any forward motion so we were sideways to the waves. so now now the, our, our boat is is taking on water and you know i you <laughs> things kind of got worse and worse and and you know at some point my husband leaned over to me and this is when I really got scared. <laughs> when my husband leaned over and yells into my ear, you know, over the wind, Leslie, whatever happens, I want you to know I love you. And at that point, I thought, okay, this means we're going to die. <laughs> um, we put on our survival suits, and um, and you know, I was, I, I began to kind of panic, until I remembered a truth, this one truth, that kind of, you know shown out in the midst um in, in the midst of that situation and that was that no matter what happened even if our boat sinks and even if we should die we were still safe so we, we were safe because we knew we knew jesus he was with us and we knew that even death couldn't separate us and i think back to um, the two storms in the Gospels. I love those stories that um, the disciples and half of them are fishermen, you know, they're out in the Sea of Galilee, these huge storms come up. And it's the same thing, they know they're going to die, except they don't have life jack, they don't have survival suits on, the Coast Guard, you know, is not going to come get them. They, they know, you know, it, that if their boat fills up with water, and they sink, they're, they're, they're gone. Um, and they were afraid, and they needed to be afraid, because they didn't, they didn't know Jesus yet. They didn't know who he was yet. You know, and I think in both of those gospel stories, Jesus rescued them. Um, rescued them, not so much maybe to save them from death, but to save them from a worse fate, which was disbelief. Right? They didn't know yet uh, who he was. So in the midst of this present crisis that we're all in, this COVID crisis, um, we know that we're not, not everybody is going to be healed. We know with cancer, not everybody is safe from cancer, right? Not every car, you know, misses that um, collision. And not everyone with COVID-19 is, is going to recover. Most will, but not all. And death appears to be, you know, the worst possible outcome. But it's not. Our real enemy is not. It's not what kills the body, it's, but it's what kills the soul, right? It's what separates us from God. 
And that's true darkness. That's true utter, utter death. But the great news, and we're coming into Easter soon, and, and so this is such a good time to remember. The great news is that that enemy, death, has already been defeated, right? That's what we're going to celebrate here at Easter. We don't have to live in fear anymore. We don't have to fear death anymore. And that changes everything for me. You know, that gives me courage. So I'm, I'm here locked in my house because I have to be. I'm obeying the law, but I'm not locked in my house because I'm afraid of dying. And we fly on bush planes all over Alaska, and we, we go out on seas and storms. And uh, I mean, I don't want to die, right? And there's a, nat there's a natural, you know, fear. It's, it's appropriate to be fearful at times. But ultimately, I'm not afraid of death. And um, that's so... That's so empowering. And the few times when I was sure I would die, Jesus was so present with me. I felt his presence so near. And that's really taken away so much of that fear. So I hope that you all can have that confidence too. And that will help you live in the midst of these um, really um, possibly fearful times with confidence and with boldness and, and with love. I think that's really valuable <laughs> a perspective at this point in time, Leslie. And I know I've kind of adopted the similar kind of thing myself. You know, if I get the virus, I get the virus. I mean, mm -hmm. there's only so much you can do to prevent that. There's only so much you can do to prevent it killing you or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, that's not really what matters. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. And it's so, um, it's so freeing. It doesn't mean that we're foolish. It doesn't mean that we do stupid, risky things. Um, it just means that God is freeing us to use our energy elsewhere, to use our energy to truly love and serve others rather than, you know, it takes so much energy to be fearful. Like that becomes your whole focus, right? You just want to sort of curl up and and protect yourself. And, and God doesn't want us living like that. He wants us to live, um, sort of, you know, live out loud, live, live boldly and, and freely. So you have to also tell us how the story ended. I know obviously oh. you made it back, but <laughs> I always forget that. that. <laughs> <laughs> I always forget that part. Okay. So, um, um, so my husband was able to get one of the engines work working, um, again. So, we, we weren't moving very fast, but now we could keep our bow into the waves and we kind of limped into, we were out in this big open stretch of ocean. We were able to um, limp into a bay and there was an old Eskimo guy that lived in that bay. Um, and we were able to, to get to his cabin and, and spend the night and, and wait for the storm to, to lie down. But we had taken on so much water. We had survival suits on, which they actually like seal around your face and your whole body. But we took on so much water inside our, somehow, and inside our survival suits, we were soaking wet. We, we had taken on that much water. So it was, a, it was a wonderful, it was a wonderful deliverance from God. Wow, I guess. What a story. <laughs> For those of us who are not, you know, seagoing nearly as much as you are, that's just like unreal. Yeah, yeah, it it was, um, but it's a you know it's it's a great memory. Again, I think all of us have these moments where God has showed up in such incredible ways, and that's why I want to get back to the remember thing yes, and the please. taking notes thing and the writing your story. We think that we're going to remember all this stuff, right? Because when it happens, it's so you know it really rocks our world, and we're, of course I'm going to remember that. But you know what? We don't. We're we're going to forget those details, and those details are powerful. Um, so that's another reason your story matters and why you need to be writing down these things. So across, you know, some of your uh, many books, uh, in addition to the new one, you know, what do you suggest for people to, uh, to go out and purchase at this point to, to have some uh, nourishment and consolation? Yeah. Do you mean in my own books? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, shameless self-promotion here. All right, thank no, you. No, I want people to know more about Leslie <laughs> okay. and her books. That's, uh, that's part of my objective of doing it. <laughs> All right, so the Your Story Matters book, I, I really, um, and I'm saying this not because it's the book that's releasing now, but I um, teach writing workshops all, all over um, the country and the world, and um, 
when I watch people come together, and a lot of times, I mean, sometimes they're writers, sometimes they're not writers, and I walk them through this process of writing their story, of remembering, and writing and turning their memories into compelling stories. It, it's incredible what happens. It, it, it's, uh, it, it's a form of, one thing that happens is it's like, it's this form of wrestling God on the page. It's people write into memories, some wonderful memories and some difficult memories. And I see them. It, God, God shows up on the page as we write into these events. And I have seen so many spiritual transformations that take place when people get down on the page with language and wrestle with God. And so much wisdom that comes out at the other end. And so much, so many moments of like, ah, oh, God was there all along and I didn't see it. I didn't see it until now. So there's all, there, there's those moments. So I, um, right now that's, I think that's a really important thing is that we begin to write our stories and begin to see where, where God has been present and um, the past is not done in us, right? God wants to, um, wants to lead us into greater joy and greater wisdom through, through the stories um, of our lives. So Leslie, I just want to say thank you for sharing some time with us. Uh, obviously, these are trying times for a lot of people, and I know that your encouragement and wisdom will be very helpful for them. Well, thanks for having me, Brian. It's just, it's a delight to be able to just speak to you all. <laughs>